Well, there are four ways to make sparkling wine. Uh, firstly, uh, by carbonation. After primary fermentation, carbon dioxide is bubbled into the wine. It is the same method we use to get bubbles into soft drink. It doesn't produce very high quality sparkling wine, however. Uh, it's more of a beverage you'd find at the bottom end of the sparkling wine market. The second way to get the fizz we love is tank fermentation, sometimes called the Charmat method. This is where secondary fermentation occurs in a pressure tank in the transfer or bottle uh, fermentation method next. The base wine is bottled with the addition of sugar and yeast. After this secondary fermentation, the filtering and the sparkling wine is transferred to a clean bottle. In Method Champenoise, the wine undergoes secondary fermentation in the bottle and it is never transferred or removed from that bottle. As per white wine vinification techniques, you're really making a white wine. At the end of vintage, when you have all these individual base wines sitting around in tank, you, um, you add liqueur de tirage, which um, is adding somewhere between 18 and 20 grams per litre of residual sugar. You're then inoculating with a yeast culture and you, um, you bottle this. What happens there is that a, um, a secondary fermentation takes place where the yeast converts that uh, predetermined amount of sugar into CO2, carbon dioxide, which is the gas in champagne, and um, alcohol. There's two different styles of wine we make here. One is the transfer product, which is the German technique, and one is the traditional method champenoise product. The only difference in style there is the, um, how shall we say, the production technique, which is the method used to remove the yeast from the bottle after secondary fermentation and maturation on the yeast leaves. If we just have a, a brief look at a bottle of champagne which is sitting there ageing on yeast leaves, getting ready for disgorgement. Um, in the transfer process, that entire bottle is basically just picked up, put on a bottling line, is taken to a special machine, the crown seal is then pierced with a spear, and overpressure is applied, and the wine inside the bottle, yeast and all, is effectively pumped to a pressure tank. From there it is clarified and re-bottled in new glass. With Method Champenoise, what we have, we have the bottle of yeast included is carefully placed onto a shaking table. The bottle is slowly inverted and the remoir <coughs> performs the technique of shaking or remoirage, whereby the yeast leaves is carefully slid down the inside of the glass to a point where the bottle is deemed to be on point. The bottle is then placed in a neck freezing solution, a brine solution, an ice plug is formed. We can then invert the bottle, remembering that the yeast lees is trapped in the ice, top of the bottle. The disgorgement process then takes place. We remove the crown seal. That forces the ice out. The same bottle is then placed on a bottling line. Liqueuring or dosage occurs. The cork is placed in the bottle and it's uh, basically expedition champagne. I think one important distinction is that uh, with Method Champenoise, as in all good winemaking, you are not um, subjecting the wine to excessive movement or abuse if you like. It's, it's in that bottle, it stays in that bottle. There's no pumping going on, you're not transferring to a pressure tank. It is really the fine way to make a premium sparkling wine.